season review for the Wallabies 2018. Spoiler alert, it was not very good. Uh, the results didn't go their way. There was a full review at the end of the season, which has led to some changes. But no X falling properly as yet. Uh, I will go over the results, the stats, the players, and what we can expect for 2019. And uh, you guys can let me know your thoughts. But yeah, results-wise, 13 games played. Four wins. Which for the Wallabies is perhaps not not ideal. It's pretty bad. Um, I mean, you take from that the fact that they got a win against Ireland, and Ireland only lost one game this year, and this was the game. Um, they didn't play all their big guns to start with, uh, and they came back and won the series, but the Irish still lost their only game to the Wallabies. So you take something from that, the fact that on their day, the Wallabies are still at uh, a top level. It's just not been their day many times this season. Um, they also got a win over South Africa at home. Uh, 23 points to 18, they beat Argentina away in that incredible comeback, 45 points to 34, and they beat Italy away kind of unconvincingly, 26 points to, to 7 the next week, New Zealand would go in and put 60 on them, so uh, the losses, the 2 to Ireland, like I said, they're still tight games, they didn't get any hidings from Ireland, which is, which is again something to, to, look, to look at as a, as a positive, even though there were losses. But from there, I mean, two pretty poor results against New Zealand in the Rugby Championship. Uh, lost at home to Argentina, which was a record-breaking win for the Argentinians. Uh, lost away to South Africa. Um, lost to New Zealand and Japan. Uh, lost to Wales for the first time in a very long time. And then lost to England kind of fairly convincingly. So... The average score uh, for for the uh, Wallabies, they, they would score on average an average of uh, 19 points. So not a prolific point scoring team in 2018. Third best of the uh, rugby championship teams. And uh, points conceded an average of 24.6, so almost 25. Again, third best of the rugby championship team. So... With a record like that, it's kind of to be expected that they conceded on average more points. Uh, then they scored. How do they do with other stats? Uh, run meters per game. Uh, average of 397, which is actually second of the rugby championship team. So ahead of Argentina and um, South Africa. Position, average of 49. Territory average of 48, which is the fourth of the rugby championship team. So unable to kind of retain a bit of ball. Playing in the wrong half of the field. I mean, that's only... 48 and 49, so it's not excessive, but over 13 games, it still adds up. Uh, tackling percent, 80.8, so that's the third best uh, ahead of only Argentina. Uh, penalties conceded, an average of 11, which is the top penalties conceded team of the Rugby Championship 4. So giving away too many penalties. Um, Line-out percentage is 81.4, which is fourth, and it's fourth by quite some way. And the Aussie lineup was not working this season, and uh, it was reflected in the numbers. Um, the scrum wasn't very good either. Offloads 8.2 a game, which is actually second, so there's a bit of flair there. But um, and goal kicking 75%, oh, sorry 76.7, so third best. So the stats are generally they were the third best team of the rugby championship four, and that's reflected by the fact that they um, they only just managed to squeak into third. They avoided the wooden spoon by. It was only by 40 minutes of of comeback that they managed to do it. So there's definitely areas to work on just looking at those numbers. Uh, how about the players, though? There were some positives. Who was their top man for run meters? It was Israel Folau. So I picked him in my Southern Hemisphere team of the season. Yep. Their top run meter getter. And uh, Dan Halepetti was second. So this is over all their performances, who was their number one guy. Five times it was um, Falau, four times it was Dan Hilopetti. How about defenders beaten? Uh, Falau, again, is on top, along with Dan Hilopetti. So two of their main guys to be used as strike weapons, getting forward with the ball and busting some tackles. Uh, Karevi is there as well, Guinea is there as well, and likewise is Beal. So they all had contributions to make. Defensively, who were the top guys? Uh kind of to be expected that their top tacklers were the two names we think of 
Um, with the Aussies in, in the defense, it's Michael Hooper first and David Pocock second. So those guys make tackles and get turnovers. It's what they do. And it's reflected in the numbers. I mean, there were also times when it was Coleman, it was Tui, it was Korobiti, and it was Kepu. But um, yeah, for the most part, it was uh, Hooper and Pocock. Missed tackles, though. Three times it was Korobiti. And uh, twice it was Beal. So two guys who we kind of already identify as being a bit defensively suspect. And yep, the results kind of reflect that. Uh, Beal was there as well. Not Beal. Uh, Karevi was there as well. He didn't play a full season because of his injuries. But uh, he's another one who gets... I remember in Super Rugby, he had a lot of missed tackles. Makes a lot of tackles, but also has a fairly high proportion that he misses. Um, Hooper was once, but again, it's because he tries to make a lot of tackles that he's going to slip off some. Uh, Guinea, Gordon, and Rod are all there as well. But Korobiti and Beal, the main suspects there defensively. So what does this mean for 2019? Um, I think the question of what happens now that there's a director of rugby over Michael Checker will be a very interesting one because the selections are not going to be down to Michael alone. It's going to be a, a three-man panel, director of rugby, Michael Checker, and an independent selector. So you got to wonder about some of Checker's favorites. We're talking Simmons, we're talking Phipps, we're talking Hannigan. Do they still play? Uh, the Wallabies are a bit soft in the Fords, so guys like Hannigan and uh, Simmons get criticized a fair bit for that. Can they bring in a bit of bulk or someone who's going to add something else? I guess we will see. Uh, likewise with the tactics. Now I'm no tactical genius, but I've seen enough of the 1014. If you guys haven't watched that, you should um, to see that uh, from what they said, times when the, the way they align defensively, it puts a lot of pressure on Guinea and uh, perhaps too much to do for him sometimes. And likewise, Korobiti actually. So uh, the fact that Guinea and Korobiti are there on the missed tackle list uh, kind of links up with what those guys said about their tactics. So whether that changes, whether there's enough time to embed something new in, again, is an interesting question. The scrum, as I said, was was poor. Uh, since Ledesma left, it's not been good. So the future of the Fords coach is still not certain. Maybe the, maybe the director of rugby replaces him. Uh, the line-out, like I said, from the stats is just not good. The set piece generally is not good, and it's such a crucial part to winning rugby games. So it's not there for the Wallabies. Who's going to be number 10? The crucial position. Is it going to be Foley? I think he surely has to be the front runner, but he's seems to be out of favor with Checker at the minute. They tried Beal. I feel like that experiment's done. Tamua, perhaps. Uh, but Quade Cooper's going to be back at the Rebels. Tamua's going to be playing 12 with the Rebels, I would say. So... Quaid's going to be getting some game time at 10. Checker said he couldn't pick him while he wasn't playing Super Rugby. He will be playing Super Rugby this year. He's another man who, who could potentially shoot into the squad. Uh, will they persist with the, the Pooper combination? So putting a Hooper at 7 and Pocock at 8. It was when they first started doing it. Was it 2015 they started doing that? I think it was. It was lauded as this, you know, tactical bit of genius that they could, you know, double their efforts at the breakdown and cause teams all kind of problems. But with that kind of playing two open side flankers, you do miss out on a little bit of that traditional number eight. Like Kieran Reed's probably a bit more mobile than than David Pocock is. Even though David Pocock's fast at the breakdown, uh, how many times do you see Kieran Reed out on the wing able to, to cause havoc out that way? How good is he in the line out? There's a fair few loose forwards around the world that are good in the line-out, and Michael Hooper and David Pocock are traditionally not them. So perhaps what's detracting from their line-out work is the fact that they are missing another line-out option or a line-out stealer kind of thing in a, in a line-out playing loose forward. So that'll be an interesting one. I can't imagine them changing it, but it's just a thought. Uh, where do they expect to go in the World Cup? I mean, their, their pool has Wales, Fiji, Georgia, and Uruguay. Fiji beat France. It wouldn't be unheard of for Fiji to knock over either Wales or um, Australia on their day because they're better than people give them credit for. Wales are looking pretty darn tough. So at the moment, you'd have to see them topping the group. But if Fiji do cause an upset that could give Australia problems. That's kind of where we're at with Australia at the moment. They'll need to go in and beat Fiji. That's going to be a, a big test for them. 
and then see how they go against Wales. They've traditionally been good against Wales, but that'll change this year as well. So, summary for their year, again, just not very good. Uh, I've never really heard that much talk from Aussie fans about Rugby Union being dead in Australia as I have uh, this year. I think a good performance in the World Cup would go a long way to turning that round. But they need to get better because right now it's just not happening for them. You guys let me know your thoughts uh, on what do you think the Wallabies will do differently next year to improve. Um, how do you think this new director of rugby is going to go and uh, guiding checker onto the right path. Uh, players you'd like to see come in. Players you'd like to see go out. Um, yeah, all that good stuff. You guys let me know your thoughts. I'll talk to you again soon. See you later.